with the Tony Noah, the team is set out in Georgia this season. How pleased are you with your team's performance today? Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but uh, it's no surprise. I mean, that was um, that was a physical, impressive group in a lot of different ways. And I think probably an underrated part about that position player group is some of the plays that they made defensively. Um, so fortunate to win the series, and you'll take it any way you can get it. But yeah, to, to shut them out is difficult to do. I think what it was going to take was a play like Dylan Dryling relaying to Curley and then Cal um, doing his thing at the plate. You kind of need stuff like that and Kirby and Xander to pitch with so much courage. So you kind of need some extra things going on probably to just hold the offense down regardless of whether it's a zero or not. How big of an impact was that defense? Uh, you mentioned right there the relay, but also Inslee's stop and catch. Yeah, I mean, Inslee's was insane. I mean, he went a long, long way to run, and then he dove. I'd like to know how many yards he made from when he left and, and made the catch. It was incredible. He's always acting like a goofball anytime he makes a good catch in BP. Um, and that one, he was serious as could be after he caught it. But either way, he did catch it. And it's a momentum swing. I think after both of those, we came in and scored uh, one inning. We scored two runs. The other one, we scored one. It, it matters. And I know today was a big basketball day. A lot of times, um, basketball coaches will talk about your best offense is defense. And that makes much more sense in a transition game like that. But I, I think even though it's a slower transition, I think it matters. And uh, you know, our, our guys had some savvy on defense today. What do you think allowed Sander to have so much success against the great lineup out there? I, I think step one is seeing his, his buddy, you know, Kirby, do what he did. Um, you, you know, and maybe he and Kirby exchanged some words or, or thoughts. I, I don't know. But I think just seeing your guy doing that, first of all, how are you not inspired a little bit by what Kirby did? And then um, Xander is a kid who's an answer unto himself just, just about who he is and how he goes about things. And he's one of many guys we touched on, Trey Lipscomb and, and Kirby and some other guys. Just other kids need to take example from him and see that there's real peace of mind and there's a real victory in just being a good teammate and uh, being loyal to your guys and finding out how good you can get and accepting the fact that there's some adversity in this game or just in life in general. And, Again, I just think there's a lot of peace of mind when you take that approach. And then you can also, in Trey's case, you can get all kinds of goodies. Um, but if you keep doing that, you, you can kind of get, you know, the gold star if, if you want um, that adds icing on the cake. But, you know, it's kind of like our basketball coach. Regardless of the result, Xander's a champion or a superstar uh, today. But it was a nice little icing on the cake that he was able to do what he did today. How encouraging is it to know that Snoop can go 26 pitches last night, come back less than 24 hours and do what he did today? Yeah, I mean, he's – He's a different guy. He's super relaxed away from the field when he's not in uniform, but in uniform, he's uh, what really a reliever is epitomized. And it's not like he can't start for us and maybe will, will at some point. Uh, but you want a guy that wants the ball and a guy who's taking care of his body so he's resilient. Um, he's incredibly competitive when he plays catch, so I think it allows him to throw back-to-back -back days where his stuff doesn't fall off very much. But uh, yeah, I think it was the first time we'd done that this year where we used a guy back to back and usually Kirby's a guy we might use three days in a row. Um, so just a big benefit to have him on our team in general. And it's nice when you got to, you know, yeah, nope. Next. What did you learn, what did you learn from your team this year? Uh, resilient, resilient. Um, you, you know, I think toughness is there. I think team chemistry is there. I think there's some good togetherness. But when Friday goes on, you, you either it either expands just a little bit or you can come closer together. And I don't think our guys did anything drastic. I think they just stuck with what the approach they have is. And sometimes I sound really stupid because I say to be consistent, you got to be consistent. But um, I, I think if you let that scoreboard or the stat sheet, you know, get you waving in the wind a little bit one way or the other, that's trouble. And I, I don't think they were deterred. They weren't happy with Friday and it was a little embarrassing, uh, but I don't, I don't think anyone was deterred. And so the resiliency factor that was there was huge. And, I think that was displayed at the plate today because their starter was so dang good. And it wasn't really a good offensive day in anything we really put together other than Bargo, but his was with two strikes and into the wind. So anything our, our guys did offensively was with some grit today. It took a long time last year for you guys to play a rubber match. Now you have three under your belt, next two plays for Bargo. How big is that to have you touch the game so early? It, it's massive. It's massive. And I think, uh, you, you know, uh, it, it adds to the experience the next time you go around, but also it adds to just your experience of why you sign up, you know, to play in the SEC because it's going to be these back and forth battles. And 
Um, when you get punched, it's you get beaten up because they're so good. And when you are able to win, it feels really good because you know you beat arguably the best. Um, so, you know, I, I think today the, the guys, you could tell there was some, you know, gratitude's a word everybody throws around now uh, when everybody's being kumbaya. But I think appreciation or, or um, just gratitude for the opportunity today. I mean, the weather's turned. Even though we had that hoops game going on, we had a great crowd because the stadium's expanded. We got more seats. And uh, why would why would you want it any other way? It, you know, to play a team that maybe were 20 runs better than, yeah, it'd be fun, but it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a true test. So I think, you know, I know what label was thrown on the group a couple years ago, but I've been watching games. There's everybody's doing all kinds of stuff. You know, I don't know if they were back then, but I, I think if you were going to label our team, which it doesn't matter what other people think, I, I think, you know, appreciation for the fact there's they're being tested and they're going to be tested a lot more. What was the message to the guys that the series on the line today? Um, you know, I think last night we talked a little bit about um, just that. You know, you got a great opportunity, um, you know, to, to do it at home, just like we did last weekend, um, and enjoy it a little bit. Uh, but you got to compete. And then we kind of talked about competition a little bit. Uh, but, but maybe I was answering in a long way the way I did because I want to make myself look smart. We, I, other people said it too, just like, hey, this would be a good opportunity. And Friday was crazy and yesterday was crazy. But... Sunday is the only day that matters once the sun comes up today, and it kind of came up a little bit on Easter Sunday. So they did a good job executing whatever approach. You know, we're outnumbered. So whatever they had going on, it was dictated by the leaders, and they did a good job with it. You mentioned Fargo. Do you think he's earned himself a lot more opportunities going forward? Yeah, and, and you know, early in the year, he was a guy – we were down to like four guys that had played in every game, and he was the only one, even though he hadn't started every one. Um, and then, you know, you get some – a couple nicks and knacks, not just for him, but for other guys. So, yeah, when he's healthy, he's undoubtedly one of our top nine hitters. I can tell you that for sure. Um, want to keep everybody involved, want to keep everybody prepped, want to keep everybody confident. Um, so that's a part of it. And then when guys are healthy, we'll go with whatever we think is the best thing for us that particular day. But he needs to be ready at all times, whether it's the start of the day, middle of the day, or end of the day, because, you know, he's a really good player and he's a hell of a teammate. I mean, they're all different with personalities, but I've said it to you guys before. That, that guy is low maintenance, which is, I think I can say it's rare these days, you know. Um, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned Trey Lipstein yesterday. He hit his first career MLB home run today. How cool is it to see that from a guy from where he started at Tennessee to where he is now? It, it's awesome. And um, now he failed. He was on the plane. He failed. You know, the guys are all jazzed up. And uh, same thing. Things have been said to get in trouble. Uh, when we get delayed there with an interview and all the guys are waiting and clapping, you know, for our huddle. And I had my phone on me and the plan was to FaceTime Trey so he could talk to the guys and that would be, you know, whatever the, the final words were for the day, but he failed to answer. So he's not that good. Um, not, not, not even he's that good, but no, he epitomizes what I was talking about before. Cause you're, you're talking about, it took him, he wasn't really recruited a lot. And then there was a red shirt year and then there's other good players in front of him. And then it, during some of his reps, Maybe he deserved more of them, but also some of them he could have done better. And things, just there's a building up process. And I think part of that reason is what I was talking about with Xander. Like, you're not going to meet a better teammate and a guy who more is just head down and is going to continue to get better regardless of what carrots or, like I said, gold stars or what stat sheet you guys have. I mean, it's, there's a lot of value into being the guy that's on the poster or the guy that gets to do the post game interview and all that. But that, that was never his focus. And uh, I don't think it ever will be, even in his big league career, which is going to last a long time. And um, it's nice he had a homer today, but our video coordinator is the smartest guy uh, we got in our building. And he said it, as soon as they called him up, everybody on the Nationals got better, including anybody. The custodians, everybody got better because that guy's around. You mentioned last night that you meet with trainers today about AJ. Do you have any updates on that? Yeah, I failed. Ms. I was going to say that as soon as I walked in. Failed, epic fail. So we'll try and get you a, a Monday morning report. Um, on him and Banky as well. Um, and then obviously KT was going to be a guy uh, that I figured we'd have to touch on tomorrow morning with you all too. But uh, he kind of gritted it out. I know some fans are like, that guy's the laziest base runner in the world. But we kind of made the deal with him to put him in the lineup and, and kind of go easy on the bases for health's sake. Anything else? I don't think so. All right, thank you.